This is Mark Soltoff for the Buck Cardinal Club, and we're here with Tara Kirk. Tara, congratulations on being inducted in the 2015 Hall of Fame. Uh, you were a great swimmer here, class of 2004, won 11 NCAA titles. You were pretty much unbeatable in the 100-yard breaststroke. Talk a little bit about your memories of, of Stanford women's swimming. Well, when I think back to my time at Stanford, I certainly think about um, one of the coolest um, times in my life when I had a great time with my team and a great time at Stanford um, at school. And, um, you know, I also think one of the things about that time was uh, my coach, Richard Quick. Um, and, you know, he was one of the best coaches around. 17th time All-American. Um, you were busy. And um, obviously you were extremely competitive. Did that start at a young age? Did you get into swimming very young and, <laughs> and just kind of stick with it? Well, the story of how I got into swimming is kind of, uh, you know, make lemonade out of your lemons thing. And <laughs> certainly I think that my swimming career has been some nice lemonade. But um, I um, got into swimming because I broke my arm in gymnastics and had nerve damage. And I had to um, do swimming as rehab. And my sister was the great swimmer. Um, she's younger than me. Um, she also swam in the Olympics the same year that I did. Um, and uh, she was the great swimmer, and my parents were like, well, you're going to have to go swimming, you know, whatever. And, and I was kind of, like, bummed to uh, not be in gymnastics anymore. But in the long run, I think it worked out. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, you set a, a world record in the 100-yard breaststroke. What is it like to hold a world record? I mean, did it sink in at the time, or is it something you look back now on and think, wow, that was, that was a pretty cool time? Well, I think when you set a world record, it's your goal. Like, you don't set a world record on accident. Like, sure. you set a world record because you targeted that time and you trained for it for mm -hmm. years. And and um, so, you know, when I set that world record, I was excited but also relieved that I had achieved my goal because it was sort of a one-shot thing. We were swimming short course um, meters, which is, you know, you can't get a world record short course yards because um, the rest of the world doesn't swim yards. Mm -hmm. um, and so I swam... It was the last opportunity to make the world record, and I did. So, pretty excited. And you were also named uh, the, the Female Athlete of the Year in the NCAA. Um, that had to be pretty special, too. Yeah, I, I actually think that that was one. Uh, the, the Honda Broderick Cup was... Um, it was a really great honor, but at the time, I think that I was like, "Oh, great! You know, this is a, this is awesome. I get to go accept this cool award." And now that I look back, I'm like, "Wow, that was that was an awesome award. I'm really glad I got that." When you think about your Stanford experiences, what things stand out? I mean, what do you reflect on the most? Well, when I think back to my Stanford experience, I think that it's, you know, it's a dual experience, obviously, as, as every student athlete's experience at Stanford is. It's intensity in your sport and then also, um, you know, growing as a student and, you know, learning all these great things. And so now that, you know, I've retired from swimming, I kind of look back at my time at Stanford and think of all the skills that I learned from you know the career that I pursue now. I also just think back and say, wow, that was such a great opportunity. I had such great opportunities at Stanford and I learned so much and I'm so thankful that I got to be a part of that legacy. And you're doing exciting things uh, you know, in your real life now. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. So right now um, I work at a think tank um, called the UPMC Center for Health Security. And it's a think tank that works um, on, on the intersection between public health and national security to sort of um, improve response to catastrophic health events like bioterrorism or nuclear terrorism to say, you know, this is a bad day for the country, but how can we be better prepared for it and how can we reduce lives lost and increase our ability to bounce back? And, and lastly, um, obviously, all Stanford student athletes receive a lot of support from the Buck Cardinal Club. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe can you just talk a little bit about how that helped you and, and uh, continues to help so many others? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I now give to the Buck Cardinal Club because it was such an important part of my life. And it, it um, you know, it was life changing to me because I wouldn't have come to Stanford without the support of my scholarship. It was the John Ariaga Three scholarship. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly thankful of all that support. And I try to, you know, give back so that, you know, some other student athlete can have the opportunity that I did. And, um, you know, I'm thankful not only for my own scholarship, but for the support that the club gives to the whole athletic department to make the, you know, the whole sort of legacy really great. And the pools and, and the staff and all of that, they all come together to one whole, which I have been really thankful for. Well, we're very proud of you. Uh, congratulations on your induction uh, tonight and uh, have a great evening. Thank you.